extremely loud stadium, but now that that end of the stadium to the north has been closed in, it's almost like the sound gets in here and it bounces back and forth. The series history. They have played the 23 times. Florida 0 and 6 versus Alabama here. Also, remember they lost twice in Jacksonville, so the Crimson Tide 8 and 0 in the state of Florida. But last year, Gators won it. That game was at Tuscaloosa. Rain, if you saw the tease earlier this afternoon, rain started at just after 5 o'clock. As you look at Cole, who has teeing the ball up at the 35, it subsided after some sprinkles of about 20 minutes, and then the range came hard for about an hour. But this field, which is natural turf, it was converted back to natural turf two years ago, drains extremely well, and Mike will be very anxious to see what kind of slippage, if any, we get from the teams. 81, Monty Duncan. Harrison Houston was 84. You looked at a moment ago. Both teams 1-0. The opener of the Southeastern Conference for two teams that have figured to be very much in the hunt. Florida, a preseason pick by many. And Alabama picked anywhere from 3 to 5 in the preseason prognostications in the Southeastern Conference. starting lineups for the Florida Gators the SEC player of the year Shane Matthews he's only a junior he'll direct the attack two very good running backs the wide receivers very good and very active Trey Everett is the man to watch anybody named Ezekiel has to be fast and up front of the offensive line Cal Dixon an All-American also an academic All-American Dexter McNabb and the big fullback will take it forward for three now four yards. And Derek Oden, the right inside linebacker, is there to make the hit. Let's check the lineups defensively for the Crimson Tide. Robert Stewart has been having lower back problems. They have to have him at 100% tonight. John Sullins opened up with an interception and nine tackles last week. He's a very good one. And in the secondary, keep an eye on McMillan. Excellent at man-to-man -man coverage. Matthews with a long count, and the left guard, Ismail, came out of his stance, or Mark White. So, rather than the gain of three, it will be erased. It looks like White is the one who moved. Brown, a key for Florida. Before the ball is snapped, we have a on first down. Must pick up four yards or more to try to keep Alabama out of nickel and dime schemes that they do so well under defensive coordinator Bill Oliver. Well, you talked off the top of the telecast of the importance of first down. Pressure up the middle as they set the screen. Matthews will be knocked down at the one-yard line. Stewart came raging through, and I think we know very quickly the situation with his back. That is a loss of 14 and very close to a safety. When you watch this replay, here's the matchup. Robert Stewart. Just gets right by. He probably was, there was supposed to be some help because it was a screen. But Alabama brought in six defensive backs on that play. It was a screen setup. Robert Stewart, there was just a three-man rush. Had to be a broken assignment. So it is third down. And for the Gators, they need the 27 and a half. Eric Rett, last year's leading rusher in the Southeastern Conference, will bring it out to the seven-yard line. And what he did was give the punter 15 yards to line up without standing at the back of the end zone line. Shane Edge will come in to kick. He punted five times last week for an average of 45.2. His longest, 62. And right now, he needs his longest. As you look at a young fellow that is going to be as exciting as anyone at the Southeast for a while, David Palmer. Young freshman who was really exciting last week in the opening game versus Temple. Light 
pressure as the marker is down. Kick is not good. Off the side of his foot. Takes a floor to bounce. And the tackle will be made on Palmer at midfield. And let's check the flag back at the line of scrimmage. It's a 42-yard punt and a loss of one on the return. Keep an eye on Saran Stacy, number 27. He will open a tailback. Had a great game last week, 95 yards. And in fact, he threw a touchdown to this man, Prince Wimbley, who also is rehabbing from the surgery. And up front on that offensive line, Matt Hamilton on a line that is very young and they are very small. Toby Shields, the center, only weighs 250 pounds. Jimmy Harper, one of the veteran officials and a very good one in the Southeastern Conference, our referee tonight. And you can hear from his call, Florida with only six men at the line of scrimmage. Bama refused. Florida is an eight-man defensive front. I'll explain it as we go along, but it's very difficult to run against the eight-man front. Woodson under some heavy heat, and they meet behind the line of scrimmage. Tony McCoy, number 71, is there, and the pressure led by Mike Bradley. Here are the starters for the Gators tonight on defense. He's an All-American, All-Academic, Brad Culpepper, third-generation Florida Gator athlete. Ephesians Bartley, you remember the name well. Last year he was the bandit, now they have moved him to Gator back. And Larry Kennedy in the secondary, part of a veteran group, started off at Ohio State, Prop 48, transferred to Florida. Saran Stacy, first carry of the night, he will lose one. Brad Culpepper, the all-everything we were just talking about. And already, we're seeing two awfully good defenses. Ron, the outside linebackers, which we'll talk about in a little bit, the way Florida plays them, now that they have Alabama in a third and long situation, they'll be able to move out and play like defensive backs. It's really, if the eight-man front is really on and gets a beat on you offensively, they can do so many things. I look for them to try to pressure Danny Woodson a lot tonight. It is third down. The line to make just inside the Florida fort. Gene Stallings looks on. Marker is down. The screen pass is overthrown. Too much pressure from McCoy. And now Bama will have to punt in return. Procedure call. Paul Pepper says no. We will decline the penalty. And now the kick return team comes in. For Alabama to have a shot, they, they, this is going to be a defensive football game because both defenses are strong. But Alabama has to find a way to run the football. That way may be the option, which they didn't run last week, but to try to put some pressure and read a defensive lineman and try to get Saran Stacy on the corner through the option. Tank Williamson is standing back deep. He will be kicking to Monty Duncan as the Gators have the return on. Duncan will let it bounce, and he will not have a chance on the return. And look at this one. It is going dead inside the seven at the six and one-half yard line. So two excellent defensive stands, and we'll take a break. With 11.35 left in the opening period, no score. The Florida field, Alabama, three plays, five yards. Florida, three plays, six yards. The Gators do not have real good field position to open it up as they go with the rep. Great second and third effort. He'll fight his way out to the nine. Last year, 845 yards rushing. He was the leading ball carrier in the Southeastern Conference. And now, Mike, talk about the situation of first down. First down is very important for Florida because if they... If they're held and have second and seven or second and eight like they have right now, it gives Alabama so many opportunities to do so many things to Steve Spurrier's offense. A moment ago, the play that almost cost them a safety. They tried to set up the screen, and someone had grabbed the running back coming through. Very good defense by Bama. Matthews going to put it up on top. He has got it.
Florida backed up. Steve Spurrier, Alabama did not bring the nickel back in on this play. They're just going to throw the deep route to Trey Everett. He just runs by the free safety. An excellent throw by Shane Matthews. He almost broke this for the touchdown. 56 yards. Well, that's one way to get out of the hole quickly. Matthews this time with the three-step drop, and that one incomplete. Alonzo Sullivan, a senior from Largo, Florida, was the man that he was looking for. Ron, here comes the two extra defensive backs in now. Now, Alabama on that second and eight stayed with their regular defense. Steve Spur then checked off and went to the pass. Now you have six defensive backs on the field for Alabama. They'll match up with the running backs. The running backs for Florida are excellent pass receivers. They run good routes, and they're always involved in the passing game. Levansky Hall and Charles Gardner are the two extra backs that Mike was talking about who just checked in. Matthews trying to get away from Stewart, and he will be roughed out of bounds by Stewart. Oh, I'll tell you, for a big guy, there is a reason that he runs that well, though. When he came to Alabama, he was, in fact, a running back. He has run a 4-6-40. Now he is 6 feet, just a little over, and weighs 270 pounds. Probably when they brought him to school, they gave him number 34 and then didn't want to take it away from him because uh, he is such an outstanding player. When you play six defensive backs, as Alabama did, there wasn't much open last play for Shane Matthews. Third down. The line to make the 25. Matthews with an audible. Pressure up the middle. Ball is intercepted at the 14-yard line. That's George Teague. And he will be tackled by Shane Matthews at the 40-yard line. Mark White is injured on the play. There are two flags down at the 42, but Alabama is indicating it is against the Gators. Ron, watch this defensive backfield for Alabama. Six defensive backs in the game. First down may become the best throwing down that Florida has. There's Shane Matthews throwing the football up the field. Just to, His receiver fell down. Good in, interception by George Teague. But again, Florida must do a better job on first down. That's their key down. Alabama has so, has done such a great job with the nickel and dime coverage that Bill Oliver, the defensive coordinator, you see all the DBs running around there in the secondary. But if you do get good yardage on first down, you keep those DBs on the sideline with Coach Stallings. We will check and make sure, as you look at Teague with the interception, that Matthews is okay because he had to come over and make a touchdown saving tackle. Following the penalty, Bama with the ball at the 4 to 39. Woodson hit as he throws incomplete and hit about four yards short. Prince Wembley is who he wanted. Tim Pauk, number 99, a senior all Southeastern Conference last year out of Miami, was the man making the play defensively. Watch Tim Pauk, number 99, on a blitz coming after Danny Woodson. The thing about the eight-man front, they can pressure you. You can't block them unless you go to a two-tight end system. So he was going to try to throw the quick hitch pattern to the wide receiver. Paul came close to getting a penalty on that play as Stacy takes the pitch and on second down is in the vicinity of the 32. Del Spear comes up to make the defensive play. opening quarter. Alabama with the deepest penetration for them in the night as Stacy Markers go down and he has the first down at the 29. Culpepper is there defensively. Last year, Ron, at the, the game at Alabama, Alabama ran to their weak side against Florida with some success. Illegal formation. Offense. Six men on the line of scrimmage. Jimmy Harper calls procedure 
And Mike, I think between jitters and the noise of the crowd, I think both teams are bothered by the atmosphere right now. It's that kind of start uh, right now. Gene Stallings knows he his team, his defense must carry his team in the early part of the schedule till his offense matures. They're a young offensive team. Danny Woodson's an inexperienced quarterback. I look for Florida at this at this point with this many yards to go for first down just to heat him up every time they can with a blitz. Carlton Miles comes out. Ed Robinson replaces him at inside linebacker, number 41. Flag goes down, and five more yards will be stepped off. Boy, the, the chatter is already going on. That time it was Mike Brandon. Dead ball, illegal movement, offensive line. Procedure against Alabama. And the tide a moment ago appeared to have the first down. And right now, they have lost a total of about 13 and a half yards. And the offensive tackle, the right side, they moved John Stevenson's a freshman, a true freshman. Woodson slips a bit, now he's got big running room. Has five, 10, and counted off at 13 and now 15 yards. He got bratted by Tim Paul, but that is enough for the Bama first down. Florida with just a four-man rush on this play. This is what Danny Woodson, such a good athlete. You see him drop back to pass. The pressure's coming. He almost fell down. Now Florida's in such deep drops with their linebackers, and he's such a good athlete, he's able to pick up the first down. <laughs> I mean, Hawk almost knocked him out of Alachua County. What a great effort. Kept himself from falling. Saran Stacy will take it for three to the 25. And Adrian Karsten is down on the sideline. Here's an update on Shane Matthews. Ron, here is the word on Shane Matthews. Just shaken up trying to make the tackle on his own interception. Says he was just mad. He forgot to put his head up when he was making the tackle. But at 6'3", 190, he says he was not going to let that man in get in the end zone. Well, as we talked to him yesterday, he is a coach's son. And he knows good and well that after throwing the interception, he'd already messed up once. He couldn't miss the tackle to mess up twice. The ball is on the ground. Picked up by Stacy. Now he loses it, and it's recovered by Mike Brandon of Florida. Oh, what an error by the Alabama Crimson Tide. Ron, they had a play also. They were going to run the option to the right side. Danny Woodson just fumbled the football. You see him with Mal Moore. Here's the start of the option. Pulls it out, just dropped the football. Fran Stacey tried to pick it up, and Mike Brandon from Florida recovered. There's a second look. Just didn't get it out clean after the fake. I think Paulk, and we may have time to go back and check it, I think Paulk touched the ball, knocked it out of his hand, Mike, in Woodson's defense. This is Rep. Oh, does he get popped as these two defensive units have really been putting some headgears on the ball carry. That time it was Sullivan, along with Jeremy Nunley. And when Nunley comes in normally, that means that Alabama has gone to a four-man rush, doesn't it? It does. They'll, they're, usually they'll have somebody on the center, but when Nunley comes in the ball game, they'll slide it and play a four-man line to try to give Florida as many looks up front as they can. Eric Rett is a single running back. Gets the pitch. Blocking is not there, and let's go to Tim Brando and get an update on what's happening tonight in other college football. Timmy. Ron Stanford uh, trying to rebound from their loss to Washington, leading 17 to nothing before Arizona's George Malulu hits Chuck Levy 65 yards on the sideline route, turns it into a big play. It is now 17 to 7 in the second quarter. We'll keep you posted throughout the night and, of course, at halftime. Wow, 17 to 7, and supposedly Stanford was all banged up for that one. Florida goes to a shotgun formation. Matthews incomplete, and Dexter McNabb wants a flag. There's not going to be one. Number 11, Hall, was all over him, and Robert Stewart was coming up the middle with the pressure. You talk about an odd play. Alabama had 13 men on the field. They brought their two defensive backs on late. They were trying to get off. Shane Matthews was trying to get the snap quicker.
to try to catch him with 12 men on the field. That's why the ball went over his head. David Palmer is back deep. Edge, his first kick of the night, good for 42 yards. They come after him. This is an end over end, and Palmer should have a chance to return. Now takes an Alabama bounce. And they will touch it dead at the 27. No score. Let's take a break. 6-17 left in this opening quarter. Well, the celebration started yesterday, and actually for some, they started coming in in their mobile homes two days ago. And they haven't stopped cheering since they got here, whether they're wearing crimson or whether they're wearing blue and orange. Woodson with the pitch to Stacy. Missed tackle at the line of scrimmage, and he almost breaks it out, and now he does. At the 45-yard line, and Stacy goes into the bench on the near sideline. Harvey Thomas was there defensively. He went right into the Gatorade. Alabama went to an unbalanced line. Caught Florida. Florida did not move over. Here's the toss sweep to Saran Stacy. Look at this cut. Talk about the Alabama fans. They're happy. He's back healthy. Also look at Harvey Thomas, 6'4, 231, defensive end running him down. Stacy is still down. Here you'll see from the end zone. See the unbalanced line, only two linemen to the left. Florida did not move over. Here's the cut back. Ran right out of a tackle, and then Harvey Thomas knocks him out of bounds. Little extra push. They avoided the flag. Carlton Miles is the man who was sitting right in the hold, number 31, and he missed the tackle. And as you might imagine, Coach Stallings is not very happy over the fact that a flag was not thrown. Derek Lassick, a junior from Haverstraw, New York, number 25, comes in at tailback. Pitch goes to him. Virtually the same play, and he has the first down. A gain of 10 as Carlton Miles is called on to make the tackle. And an Alabama offensive line that had struggled a little bit last week looks very good right now, Mike. The exact same play, the exact same formation. Unbalanced line, you get the extra blocker to the point of attack. Florida will make an adjustment to try to stop that by moving their defense over one man. Martin Houston is in the game at fullback. He's replacing Kevin Turner. Martin is a junior from Center, Alabama, 5'10", 235 pounds. Lassick breaks off one, tries to scramble out of another, and on two very impressive carries, he is down to the Florida 37-yard line. Carlton Miles again has to make the tackle. Here you see Derek Lassick on just a sprint draw play. Lead blocker Kevin Turner opens up, missed tackle, picks up seven yards. Ron, I really believe Florida just is caught a little bit right now defensively. The two plays that they ran the unbalanced line has thrown them off a little. You know what? Uh, Saran Stacy is back in the ballgame. My impression, though, after those two runs, is Lassick right now is a step quicker than Saran Stacy. He hit the hole quicker, right? You may be right. Saran Stacy is such a powerful runner. Yeah. He ran right out of the tackle. Another play here, they ran the unbalanced line, but they put it on the left side this time. Grand State's an outstanding player. So it's going to be a third down. And they need to cross the 34-yard line of Florida to continue this drive and keep it alive. And in fact, if they don't, they're going to wind up having to punt because that would be 50-plus on a field goal attempt. Well, it has to drive the offensive coaches crazy. They have a nice drive going, and they drop the snap from center. They just make a lot of mistakes because of youth. And now a timeout has been called by Alabama so we'll take it with them 432 left in this opening quarter and a big third down for the tide is coming up Back Ron Franklin Mike Gottfried and Adrian Parston from newly remodeled Florida field and we are awaiting what is supposed to be a record crowd tonight in excess of 85,000 but we have seen quite a ball game so far if you enjoy defense Bama, one of two on third down conversions. Woodson rolls it, gets by a tackle, has a man open, and it's thrown out of bounds. Bigley is the man he wanted. And a flag 
flag is down at the 39. Defensive team. Wow. Great for Alabama. They ran the sprint out pass to the formation side. Danny Woodson would have been better off just keeping that ball and trying to pick up the first down running. They had good coverage on Donnie Finkley. But now they're in great shape. Offsides against the defense. And that is going to be very close to, if not, giving Alabama the first down. The co-defending national champion Georgia Tech takes on Virginia live college football Thursday night at 8 o'clock. That's this coming Thursday night. Georgia Tech and Virginia. Right here on ESPN. Well, be a great play to run the option on third. Real short with Danny Woodson to try to put the ball in his hands again. Either that or give it to Saran Stacy. Straight ahead with the carry. The ball came loose, and Florida is saying they got it. Tony McCoy is down at the bottom of that pile. And from where that has been marked, Mikey's not going to have it. I think Gene Stallings on the road has to go for this. It's not a field goal situation. He must get this first down with this young team offensively. Field goal attempt would be 52 yards. Opportunities and have had let they've let both of them go astray. One on a fumble. Pass over the middle. Complete to Terrell Jackson, his tight end. That's going to be good for about seven and a half, maybe eight yards, as McMillan is there to make the tackle. And Jackson, an interesting story. He is converted from a fullback. In fact, the backup tight end, Charlie Dean, was a linebacker and a fullback before they moved him to tight end. Ron, I like that call on first down because that's the time to throw the football and play action's the way to do it because you hold the linebackers and you slow down the rush with the play action pass. Defense is there. George Teague, he already has an interception tonight, and he headed off that play right there, but not before Florida got the first down. Big first down. Need to get something started offensively. Their defense is playing well. They've had poor field position defensively, and they've responded by holding Alabama. Alabama's made some mistakes to help them. First down again, good play action pass down. on the play action all the time in the world gets it away and it is tipped and it is intercepted again number one Stacy Harrison and finally will be knocked out of bounds that is Ismail and Everett who make the tackle across the 40. I was watching Steve Spurrier. He threw his hands up in the air. He's frustrated because he felt he had some open receivers and the ball was just thrown poorly, too late. And most of the times when interceptions occur, they occur when you start to scramble and you're trying to find somebody down the field. During the run by Clippin, white team, white ball, first and 10. 
Here's the defensive backfield of Alabama just funneling everything inside. The play is open coming across the middle, but Shane Matthews takes a little bit longer, forces the ball in, it's tipped, and there's the interception. But there's your clip right there. 56 White makes the hit from behind, and that's the reason for the pivot. That's Derek Odin who made the push from behind. And the numbers on Shane Matthews right now, two of six with two interceptions for 66 yards. Woodson, he just throws it away. Really had no choice. He was being destroyed as Paul, number 99, and 98 Harvey Thomas were just making a sandwich out of him. Well, you have to feel for Danny Woodson. The pressure's coming from the outside. Myrick Anderson, watch this. He gets a little piece of it, and then inside pressure comes also. He didn't really even have a chance to set up. Very dangerous to even let the ball go. No score if you just joined us. Two minutes, ten seconds left to play first period. the first man through close to the 20-yard line and it will now be third down and the line to make for Alabama is the 25 McCoy defensively it's interesting when you coach and you have a young quarterback and as I say Danny Woodson is a senior but very limited experience he's 6'3 220 outstanding athlete from Mobile Alabama but you're limited in this kind of stadium because of the noise of trying to change some plays and now more the offensive coordinator just trying to settle him down Alabama one up three on third down conversions. Woodson drills it, has it complete at the 35 yard line. Good for the first down. And he put that one right on the money to Prince Wembley. Danny Woodson. Did a great job of staying in the pocket here. Here you see him set up. He's going to throw the curl route to Prince Wembley. You see him come into the screen right here. Florida did not pressure that time. They went back and played good zone defense. Curl was there. Good first down. The good throw by Danny Woodson. We'll have to go under one minute in this opening quarter. Saran Station. Great sidestep. Makes another good move. And Myrick Anderson finally will make the hit on him, but not before he has gained nine yards. Boy, Saran Stacy does a nice job of reading the blocks of his offensive line. Here he gets the ball in a sprint draw. There's the first cut because Florida had penetration. Spins. Finally, the tackle's made. Pretty good gain. Barger with a really good block in the play. You could see number 62 that he made the hard cutoff of. Barger, a sophomore out of Birmingham. Woodson wants his wide receiver to move to the other side. They're going to have to call timeout. There was only three seconds left on the 25-second clock, and you can see the offensive unit, along with Gene Stallings, putting their head in their hand. Sometimes you just try to get out what you can get out. Again, when you've got a starting freshman tackle, John Stevenson, you got a freshman wide receiver in there, David Palmer, you've got an inexperienced quarterback. Again, you're just trying to do what you do best, not make any big mistakes because your defense is so strong. Well, Alabama has had two great opportunities as you look at the defensive rankings for 1990. Clemson leading the nation, then Ball State. Alabama number through number three and you know we should make mention Central Michigan who knocked off Michigan State today they were number four in the nation they won the Mac last year so for people that are saying how in the world did that happen it won because Central Michigan has some pretty doggone good players well Ron there's a key in football if you can run the football you have a chance to win if you can stop the run you have a chance to win uh, and your chances just keep increasing because of the ability to stop and be able to run the football Central Michigan that does not surprise me today you know something else we all get we all get caught up in a thing of of Florida and their offense. They have been in the top five in defense for the past three years. They play some good stuff themselves. Ball on the ground and has been recovered. 
covered by Paul Pepper. Mike, did he fumble it from the snap? I lost it. I think he pulled out too fast. There's Gene Stallings and Mal Moore talking about it. Mike Solari, the offensive line coach also. I just think he pulled out too fast and fumbled the football. Didn't get the snap. Well, you want... What he's trying to say to him is that as I, as I watched him trying to show his hand there, he said the ball hit too high on my hand. He just hopped right out of there. And as the guard started to move, as usual, what happens, he get kicked around a little bit. That is three fumbles for Alabama tonight. They have lost two. Eric Riff, straight up the middle, gets hammered as he gets in the vicinity of the 42-yard line. Eric from Pembroke Pines, Florida. John Sullins is there to make the stop. Six carries now for only 23 yards for Rhett. And an Alabama player is shaken up as we come to the close of the first quarter. So let's take a break. No score at the end of the first 15 minutes. We'll be right back. Well, we just talked about defense toward the end of that quarter, and both defenses in that first 15 minutes played extremely good football but Florida with a good opportunity now from the 42 Matthews with the screen has to throw it away and he got knocked all the way back to the 35 yard line as John Copeland was coming through there's Odin he was injured just a moment ago Derek Odin a junior from Tuscaloosa the second leading tackler on this team in 1990 Mike, you talk about even. We have no scores. 76 total yards for each team in the opening quarter. Great defensive effort by both defenses. Matthews incomplete on the comeback. Sullivan couldn't hold on. Langham played him tough. You know, in coaching, sometimes you get matchups. Bill Oliver, the defensive coordinators, went against Steve Spurrier when Steve was at Duke. Bill Oliver is the coordinator at Clemson. Then they went to USFL together. Steve Spurrier was at Tampa. Bill Oliver is at Memphis, and now they go against each other, Alabama and Florida. And Bill Oliver's had success. Edges kick hanging. Will bound at the five and goes into the end zone. 42 yards and a kick in Alabama. We'll get it at the 20 yard line. Well don't forget baseball. This is what the pennant chase looks like right now. Boston four and a half behind Toronto then Detroit six off the pace. Uh, two of baseball's best hitters slug it out with the Boston Red Sox pay a visit to the house that roof built. Don Mattingly and uh, Boggs among the AL batting leaders. Boggs trying to win his sixth batting title. His Red Sox are in the chase for that East flag. Tries to get to the outside, turns the corner, has five and then six. As Will White, who did not start the ball game tonight, he is an All-American at free safety, but had injured an ankle, is now in the ball game. Number two. That's why Saran Stacy, Will White makes the tackle on St Saran Stacy. That's why he's a great back. He turned a bad play into a six-yard gain because he was able to skate outside with his speed and out distance the contained man. Again, looks for some running room. Has one, then two. Paul Pepper, you could see him along with 99, Tim Paul. Eight carries now for 40 yards for Stacy. Well, this is a great chess match, coaches wise. Both coaches trying to milk away to get in the end zone against two really good defenses. I mean, both these defenses are playing well. They're playing tough, strong defense. So if you just joined us, here's the situation. 14 minutes left to play until halftime. It is third down Alabama. The ball resting at their own 26. They need the 30.
Woodson's pass incomplete. He wasn't even close to Derek Warren, his junior tight end. And a flag is down in the backfield at the 20. They brought eight people on that blitz on Danny Woodson in a passing situation. Have a face mask, defensive, unintentional, five yards. It is not an automatic first down. It is not an automatic first down. That's not a three-step drop by Danny Woodson. And still the pressure almost got to him. You could see the player come by. The five yard is incidental, does not carry the first down unless. Unless it has enough yardage to move the sticks, and that's what happened. Right now, Ron, if you're coaching this ball game, you're starting to figure we got to force a turnover. Florida's offense has to force another turnover, and if you're the other side of the field, you don't want to beat yourself with a mistake, but you want a big play. You need a big play. Let's go to Adrian Carson for another update. Adrian. Rod, thank you very much. Two problems when Alabama has the ball. The center is complaining about when he moves the ball. We had that hour-long downpour before the game. The ball is getting slick. They can't handle it between the center snap and the quarterback handoff. Secondly, it's getting very loud down in this closed end with the new 10,000 seats. The offensive lineman, when Florida fills the gap, cannot hear the call between each other, therefore not making the proper block. And that's so important, people don't even realize the line call to the near side is Lassick. He will turn the corner and dives for the first down. And oh, did he get a good spot. He is going to be marked out at around the 42-yard line. Carlton Miles was in pursuit. They went to the unbalanced line again. Every time they went to the unbalanced line, they ran the toss sweep and picked up good yardage. First, the first two times they ran it, they cut up inside and tried to cut back against the grain where everybody was running. On that particular play, they got Derek, Derek Lassett outside. So for Alabama, they move the chains again and now improve that field position out to the 42. And you look at the rushing yardage so far. Florida, a very good running football team on the 10 total yards. Roosevelt Patterson, number 77, who is a huge sophomore at 6'3", 290. I think you could see him come out of his stance. Ron, the reason they're having success with the unbalanced line. Dead ball, ball start, off end. When you play against an eight-man front team, it's balanced. There's four on one side, four on the other. When you move to an unbalanced line, you pick up the extra blocker to that side, and that's what Alabama's doing so effectively right now. Now, Florida eventually will move over one man to compensate for that. Wilson again with play action. Over the middle, has a man wide open, and I'm telling you, Warren had the ball thrown behind him. You could see how open he was. Danny Woodson on the move. He never really set his feet and throws behind Derek Warren. Could have set his feet there, taken a little bit longer. He may have been able to deliver the ball to Derek Warren. Mike Woodson is only one of five. And on the other side of the line, Florida's quarterback is only two completions, so three between these two quarterbacks. Credit to surprise. defense. Credit to defense. Both defenses outstanding. Woodson, that's a draw. Has five, has ten, and then he just goes into a burrow. And a pretty good thing is he was about to lose it all. Culpepper is there, along with Miles. And we might explain, you have seen number 26, Myrick Anderson, in on a number of plays tonight. He is replacing Monty Grow, who we were given the word just prior to kickoff tonight that Monty Grow, a junior from Inverness, had been suspended for tonight's ball game for violation of team rules. That was the only explanation that was given by Florida. Where that hurts you is that Myrick Anderson didn't get a lot of work on defense this week, but he has played well in the first quarter. Third down. They need the Florida 48. Wembley at the 
the 47-yard line. Woodson's pass to play to Wimley. Woodson had Brandon and also Fee Bartley coming all over. That tells you what a good athlete Danny Woodson is. Under pressure, he was backing up when he threw the football. He didn't get any of his legs or hips underneath him. It was all arm to avoid the blitz. McCoy comes back into the lineup, number 71 for the Florida Gators. Very good pass rush from him. Alabama four and a half on first down. Florida, you can see one and a half for them as the pitch comes to Stacy, loses the ball, and Florida has recovered. <laughs> the recovery and it was Timmy Falk and that's four fumbles for Alabama they have lost three wow uh, Eugene Stallings just makes you sick to your stomach you just see all the turnovers your offense you, you're moving but you just can't sustain a drive but where eventually you're going to see the effect of these turnovers is the Florida eventually is going to draw a bead on this Alabama defense you can't keep putting them out there in bad field position the turnover story so far yeah, it rained before the game, but don't credit the wet field. Credit some very hard-hitting defenses. Shane Matthews, incomplete. Harrison Houston is who he wanted. Let's look back at that last fumble. Unbalanced line again. Here's the tackle. As he's coming down, Strand Stacey coming down, the ball just pops out late. Puck all, just he almost took it away from him. You right? almost thought that ball was going to be blown dead. I think a lot of players around there thought it was blown dead. Rep, a single setback. Matthew sets and throws this time, and he has Trey Everett. Antonio Langham is there on the stop, and let's go back to Tim Brando. Fellas, one of the overlooked games today on a pivotal Saturday is Maryland Syracuse. Watch the Orangemen trailing 14 to 7 off the option. Doug Walmack will keep it and go into the end zone. It ties the game at 14. I think you'll agree, guys, the winner of this game could easily be playing in a bowl game around the first of the year. And that's for sure. Maryland with an impressive showing there. 14-14. Very good. Ron, seven DBs in the game. Seven defensive backs for Alabama. Pass is complete and inside the 40-yard line. Sullins will make the tackle on Willie McClendon. Yeah, Shane Matthews does an excellent job against the seven DBs. You see all the defensive backs in this play. Shane Matthews picks out Willie McClendon, his running back, who comes out against the one defensive lineman who's covering him. John Sullins, a linebacker, was on him, so he picked the right choice. He had the running back versus linebacker. Thank you to McClendon. Receivers just stop moving. Finally throws it, and it's complete at the 30 to Harrison Houston. Good receivers know you can't wind up with your feet in concrete. You got to help your quarterback out. Watch the coverage of Alabama. They're in with a regular defense now. Four, just four defensive backs. Still very good coverage. You see over the middle, there's a receiver open, but Shane Matthews pulls it down. Now the receiver should run with Shane Matthews, redirect their routes to try to help him. Matthews, five of 12, two interceptions, 92 yards. Good heavens, you could hear the headgears. Michael Rogers, one of the first men to get there. And also Antonio London. The running backs make this system go for Steve Spurrier. Watch the linebackers here. Michael Rogers reads the draw, just comes up and makes the play on Willie McClendon. What Steve Spurrier likes to do, Ron, is create a mirage in other words everybody talks about his pass offense but if you look at his numbers he runs just as much as he passes and he'd rather run but he wants everybody to think I throw the football I throw the football and he does do it very well but he also runs the football very very effective 
Doesn't miss it by much. Third down. Both tight ends come into the ball game. Terrell Jackson and also 86 Charlie Dean. Change the thinking in the SEC. Brought a pro passing attack. That's affected the league. A lot of teams are going to a 4 3 defense to try to help against this passing attack. He also brings the eight man front into the league, which is good run defense. And most of the teams in the SEC are eye oriented teams, which means they're going to run the football. So he has really made an effect on this league in the short time he's been in it. Still no score. You can see the clock running down. 9.20 left until the half turn. They set the screen for the first time tonight. It works as they go to the tight end, and that will only go for a couple of yards as the ball comes loose at the 27. Antonio London came up to make the hit. You talk about some crisp tackles tonight. Shane Matthews is going to set the screen. But Antonio London, the linebacker number 55, was reading it all the way. And when the running back cut back inside, Antonio London with a great tackle. Antonio was ill yesterday. He started to come out on the field to loosen up and had to go back in. He said he was having some stomach problems. But uh, I think all of, all of that has been forgotten. Second down. Florida needs about eight to the 19-yard line. Matthews going to go long. In the end zone, no flag, and Pete got tangled as he wanted Monty Duncan. You see the six defensive backs of Alabama. Willie McClendon comes loose late, but he doesn't see him and tries to get the ball in the corner. Mark McMillan with good coverage may have tripped up the receiver. Here's another look. Lonnie Duncan just can't keep his feet. The feet did get tangled, and it was McMillan who tangled him with him. Most of the times, the official will not throw a flag under those circumstances. Florida fans didn't like it, though. Gets it away. Incomplete. That was Willie McClendon. And they tried to get the pass to and Robert Stewart coming up the middle. But I'll tell you, the, the screen passes, anything delay has just not worked for Florida tonight, has it? No, that young man did a great job on coverage. John Sullen, he was the one linebacker left in the defense, and they Steve Spurrier tried to put Willie McClendon, number five, on John Sullins, but John Sullen just did an excellent job of defending that pass. Florida short one man. So they will take a timeout. Arden Chajewski comes on for the field goal attempt, but we will take a break. We'll be right back to Florida Field. We'll have to play until halftime. Arden Chajewski now moving forward to attempt a field goal. Let's see where they're going to place it down. It looks like at about the 34 yard line. His longest was 47 against Auburn last year. Plenty of distance. And he's good. Arden Sadewski. 15 of 19 last year, 23 of 27 on his career. Very consistent. Let's go back to Tim Brando. Ron, you've got three points in your game. I'm going to talk about three runs. It was tied at two, extra innings. Roger McDowell, who got the save last night for the Dodgers, surrenders this one off the wall to Ron Gant. Keith Mitchell will come in and score with the bases loaded, and 
The Braves now have the lead in the National League West by virtue of a 3-2 victory over the Dodgers. And don't forget, our game coming up tomorrow night, the Yankees and the Red Sox on ESPN. We'll have more on the pennant races and college football coming up at halftime when Lee Corso joins me. All right, Tim, so they're partying in Atlanta tonight. They were partying last night. They're just, they're so excited over that baseball team, and for very good reason. They have started a small celebration of shorts here at uh, Florida Field. Three to nothing as you look at Palmer, number two. David, a freshman from Birmingham. Derek Lassett and Chris Anderson, oh, well, so back in a triple safety, but it'll come to Palmer at the nine. Great coverage by Florida on the special teams. Pete Archie leads the attack on the special teams and stops him short of the 20. So let's take a break. 7.48 left until halftime. Florida by a field goal. And Krzyzewski with a 44-yarder just moments ago, and that is the difference in this ballgame. Florida leads 3 to nothing. complete to Finkley. And he will be stopped at the 30. Very close to a 10-yard gain. Lawrence Hatch makes the tackle for Florida. A lot of teams when they play against the eight-man front will do a checkoff system if the outside linebackers of the eight-man front are crowded, Ron, to stop the run. They'll check off to the quick pass. It's just automatic, so you don't have to worry about crowd noise. If the outside backers are outside on the receivers, then they'll give the ball to Saran Stacy. So it's a run-pass situation when they go to the line of scrimmage, and it just depends where those outside backers are. You can see what the Florida defense did in 1990 against the rush. game as Tim Paul could burst through. Nice. The stats first. Delay a game. Offensive team. Five yard penalty. Adrian Carston, what do you have going on the sideline? I'll tell you what we got going, Ron. Shane Matthews right now is six for 15 or six of 15 for 94 yards, but it's the two interceptions that got him boiling. I just overheard a conversation. He said, Coach Spurrier, these six defensive backs are driving me crazy. His quote, they are so darn fast. He takes a look at his primary, secondary receiver. His third receiver is by a, gone by the time he's got a chance to take a look at him again. Alabama again going on the quick snap count, and Stacy breaks two, now three tackles, and comes out to the tw to the 34-yard line. Will White finally stop him. What you can look for is as Steve Spurrier sits and talks to Shane Matthews, first down to be a passing down because they won't bring the extra defensive backs in second and third down when gene stallings brings all the extra dbs in run draw power plays just try to keep them off balance when they have all the dbs in run the football when they don't have them in throw it woodson's pass is caught by finkley at the 47. There's Brad Culpepper, the outstanding defensive lineman. Good block by William Barger, number 62. Good protection. Now, Danny Woodson's making some good plays. Here he hits Donnie Finkley. Again, inexperience. There's just no, there's no substitute for experience, and Danny Woodson will continue to become better. Again, they go with the quick count. Look at the fumble in the air. And the ball is down at the 45-yard line. That was Steve Bartley. And I would remind you just one year ago that the hit he made on LSU's Todd Kinchin right here in this, this same stadium that just hushed everybody. Wow. Five Alabama fumbles. They had lost three. They got that one. And Bartley looks as though he shook himself up with the hit. Those fumbles cause the coach who's calling plays a lot of problems. Also because he tries to call plays to settle this team down. But he's also trying to call plays to score. But five fumbles. Just look where that ball popped all the way out. Because the defensive man put his helmet on the football. Good thing that George Wilson was alert. And a big left guard made the recovery. Fee Bartley is still down at the fact. Mike, this is very close to the part of the field, except it was a little bit closer to the hash mark. 
where he hit Kenshin and knocked him cold last year. Just saw Ron Zuck, the defensive coordinator on the side of the field. He coached for me at Murray State in Kentucky, at Cincinnati, and at the University of Kansas. He's an outstanding coach. Here's Derek Lassick, and watch the watch the helmet is put right on the football. Derek Lassick never was able to bring that ball in, Ron. He never was able to cover it up. It just happens so fast, the penetration. the defensive coordinator sent they were good they were able to get the helmet on Danny Woodson Jay Barker got a blow oh, 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 fast. Fast. offensive oh, team 15 oh, yards oh, from oh, to five. so Alabama really uncorks one at themselves here they lose their quarterback for at least one play they grabbed a face mask which cost them 15 and they got to bring in Jay Barker, who was a freshman out of Trustville, Alabama. He has had a shoulder injury and, and has not had an opportunity to play. I saw spring practice. Danny Woodson and Jay Barker were even in spring practice. Both got hurt at the same time. Then Danny Woodson was able to get back earlier, and that's why he's the starting quarterback. Jay Barker, young, inexperienced, but a real competitor. Better get out of bounds, and it's Tony McCoy who will catch him from behind, but not before he brings it out to the 42-yard line and picks up 15. That's like coming in with the bases loaded, second and 31. But but the, the difference is it's also like he got Nolan Ryan on the mound. Look, he almost drops the ball. Look at this. First snap from center. Mike. I don't know if the people at home can appreciate the hitting that is going on in this ball game, but I'll tell you, this is as hard a thumping as I have seen in a long time. In fact, the only game that I can remember was the Steelers against the Orders back in a game of the Dome in the 70s. Tip and incomplete. Memo will have to punt. Culpepper putting on pressure. Ron Zuck, the defensive coordinator, knows he has a young quarterback in. Third and 16 yards. Puts pressure on with a blitz. Here's Cole Pepper with his hand up. Always those defensive linemen, you like to have their hands up. Beautiful driving spiral. Duncan, back to the twin. And he will be stopped at the 16-yard line. 47 yards in the punt and four on the return. Woodson on the sideline, they continue to look at that right wrist. Well, Adrian will get us a report on that shortly. 5.06 left until halftime. And the pitch, they'll bring it back against the grain, and this is Rick all the way to the 30 yard line. Let's go down to Adrian Karsten. Adrian. Ron, appears to be the wrist. It's actually his right elbow. Possible hyperextension. Definitely bruised. There's also a laceration with 15 yards on the ground and 50 yards through the air. This is not something he wants to be out of right now, but right now he doesn't have any choice. Well, he really doesn't. And, and particularly where they're putting that bandage, if there is a laceration, normally you get stiff, and that's not where you want to have a stiff joint if you're going to play quarterback. They ran the same play. Dawson up the middle and they're trying to work on Alabama and their quickness and over pursuit right now Mike I'll tell you what they're doing they went to a two tight end offense now they're going to balance the Alabama defense up they're going to get a helmet on every one of those defensive players they start to pitch one way and then they watch here's a two tight end set here's Eric Red. all of a sudden works backside you think it's a toss front side and he brings it backside 
Second down at about three. Now eight carries, 46 yards for Rip. Matthews, the quick pass complete to Trey Everett. And he is down at the 42. Our Toyota Leadership Award winners this week are from the University of Alabama, George Wilson. He's a junior from Bessemer. He's a member of the Gamma Beta Phi and Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Also active in speaking to local high schools. And for the University of Florida, it's Cal Dixon. He's a senior from Merritt Island, Florida. He's been named three times SEC All-Academic and is a member of the Goodwill Gators. Toyota pleased to donate $1,000 to each player's school general scholarship fund for their academic excellence and also community service. Right up the middle with the carry again into the 48-yard line is Rhett. Antonio Linden, junior from Tullahoma, Tennessee, comes up to make the stop. I like this move by Steve Spur. This is the reason why. You have trouble on first down. You've not been able to get a lot of yards. They're able to bring the nickel and the dime defensive backs in. What do you do? You go to two tight end offense. You get them spread out. You've got two wide receivers to throw the football to, and you've got a power running game. I think this is an excellent move by Steve Spur. We'll see if he gets points out of it. On a second and five. Again, the short drop, and they hit Trey Everett as the corner is playing him a little soft, and he will pick up the first down plus five. They have to play it that way, Ron, because of the, the too tight end offense. They need help in there against the run. That's why you're going to be one on one on the outside. Now, this, I'm sure it hasn't caught Alabama by surprise, but it's a good move by Steve Spurrier. Alabama now has to get active on defense to try to counteract this. Bill Oliver said a funny thing this week on the phone, the defensive coordinator for Alabama. He said, oh, you forget last week's formation. We won't see those this week. That's Steve Spurrier. Straight ahead of the handoff, and those two middle backers are right there on red. John Sellens and also Michael Rogers team up to make the hit, 90 and 52. And also you can see 94 John Copeland. The junior from Lynette, Alabama. Very tough player also. Now what Alabama has been able to do, they've now rolled both their corners up to play a two-deep coverage to take away the quick game. Now something over the middle for Florida might have a good opportunity to be successful in the passing game. Well, Terrell Jackson, the tight end, is flexed out about 12 yards in the left. And now here comes a flag, and nope, that's a balloon. Good heavens, somebody threw an orange balloon all the way from the end zone. <laughs> yeah, sign him up as a quarterback. That's a pretty good arm. You're right. <laughs> and the ball recovered by Alabama. Pardon for the distraction. We're looking to see the flag, and meanwhile, the fumble. They went to the two deep coverage and opened up over the middle for Harrison Houston. Fumbled the football, a turnover, Alabama defense. You've got to credit the defense in this ballgame. They've been forcing turnovers, both defenses, trying to help the offenses by forcing the turnovers. Turnovers, three for each team. Kevin Turner brings it out in the vicinity of the 30-yard line, and Will White again will come up and make the stop. You have to give a lot of credit to the Florida coaches. They saw something. They went to a two tight end offense. Then you look at the Alabama coaches up here. They make their move. And I tell you, Gene Stallings and Steve Spurrier, there's Ron Zook against Mal Moore. You've got a great coaching chess game going tonight. Well, Alabama had some real good opportunities. Florida with their best of the night, and they turned the ball over. You mentioned something earlier, the hard hitting. That's had a lot to do with these turnovers. It really has. Well, you could see it on that uh, on the last play. I mean, that ball was not just given up because of lack of concentration. Ron, you see Steve Spurrier here. He doesn't wear headsets. He calls the offensive plays, doesn't wear headsets. My contention is the reason he doesn't do that is because he doesn't want any distractions when he's calling the offensive play. John Reese, the former quarterback here, also works and he looks at coverages, then he gets the word down to another coach who gives it to Steve. But Steve Spurs is one of the few head coaches I've seen will not wear it for all the plays, but don't wear the earphones. 
Oh, look at here. Now he puts them on, but not when he's calling those plays. Just over a minute and a half left. And Stallings checking. You can see the timeout. Alabama has one. Florida has two. Turner will go for short yardage around the 35, now the 36 yard line. He's a senior from Prattville, Alabama. Mike Brandon, one of the first men there to make contact. But if you, you're thinking, if you're the offensive coach of Alabama, I need to try to get down and get a field goal with 108 left on the board, but I don't want a turnover. We played poorly here offensively in the first half. I don't want to give Florida any more points to put my defense in bad position. Looking and Steve Bartley knocks the ball loose. Who's got it? Bama recovers. And let me tell you what I've just been told from the sideline. Woodson will not be able to play the rest of the night because of that injury to his elbow. So uh, Barker, who is playing with a sore shoulder and just got roughed up again, had better be comfortable with what he's got because he's got to go. Well, they dodged a bullet there on that fumble because that was just what I was talking about. Right now, if I'm Gene Stallings, 44 seconds on the board, I'm going to run a play and try to take this one to the house for halftime so I can get organized. Florida stops the clock. It will be third uh, down. 44 seconds left until the halftime. Three to nothing. Florida leads Alabama with a third down situation. And here's an update on Woodson. He will not play again this half. It will be evaluated at halftime whether he will be able to go in the second half. And quite frankly, I'm surprised they don't have him already in the locker room, so if nothing else, put ice on that and keep any swelling down that might occur. Chris Anderson, who had the 96-yard touchdown run last week, takes it to the 30-yard line, and, and Florida will call that last time out. They'll stop the clock with 36 seconds left, and Alabama, with the fourth down and long, will have to give the football back to them. Well, coming up at a halftime, the halftime report scores and highlights. Timmy B will be there with Lee Corso. Bring you up to date on what has happened today. And in case you have been far, far away and didn't hear, one of the big upsets, Michigan State, fell to Central Michigan today. And out west, the co-national champion Colorado Buffaloes had in a string of 11 straight at home broken as the Baylor Bears upset them in a very tight ball game. It's a great thing about college athletics on any given Saturday. Florida right now will go on a 10 man rush with 36 seconds to go. Spent their last time out. They're going to try to put pressure on this punt through the block. Florida works extremely hard on blocks. Four games last year were swayed, I guess, influenced or directly. In fact, they beat Alabama on a block punt. Special teams are excellent. Great job of getting that one away. He just sidestepped the man coming at him for the block. Duncan will go down at the 36 yard line. 43 yards in the punt and nine on the return. And 25 seconds left till halftime. Watched Alabama's sideline. Against Florida, you have to really try to measure the personnel when they come off the sideline to see what they're coming in with. But with 25 seconds to go, Alabama's bringing in 7 DB, 6 DBs. 8 of 17, two interceptions, 100 at 8 yards for that man, Shane Matthews. was juggling the ball as he looked up saw the, the man coming up to make the hit on him and still made the reception that was George Teague it was a great pass great pass reception under pressure three man rush for Alabama seven DBs in the game again over the middle it's open and is complete to Sullivan and he will fight it forward to the 29-yard line. Shane Matthews needs to kill the clock once the clock starts when they move the chains. Just kill it to give his field goal kicker a chance to come on the field. 
You see him getting set. They don't want a five yard penalty because that might push him out of range. This one is going to equal his longest distance anyway and you see him stop it with five ticks left. So Krzyzewski who had one a moment ago from 44 will get a chance to equal his career long of 47 I believe on this one. With where the line of scrimmage is at the 32. we mentioned earlier just after he kicked that one 15 of 19 last year very consistent and this would be a new long if he hits it it is a 48 yard attempt he's got the distance and he is good halftime here at Florida Field and Arden Krzyzewski has put his ball club up by six on field goals of 44 and now 48. Florida Field and our score at halftime there you see it the Gators six and Alabama nothing and Mike in looking at the first half I made mention of the second quarter that this is as hard a hitting football game as I've seen in a very, very long time. How about you? Ron, you're right. Folks, if you like great defense, you got to enjoy this game. We're going to show you right here Shane Matthews. This is what he's seeing six and seven DBs by Alabama and forcing him into some bad throws. Late in the half, Florida went to a two tight end offense that helped them. On the other side of the ball, Alabama has been forced by the Florida defense into several turnovers and they made a lot of mistakes. Six fumbles. When you look at the stats, the key stat is fumbles lost, three fumbles lost by Alabama. They fumbled six times in their rushing yardage by Florida, only 39 yards rushing. Great defensive first half. Well, those numbers tell the story. Alabama having lost three fumbles in the first half. And of course, that one that Florida lost very costly as they had driven the ball deep into Crimson Tide territory. Rulon will kick it off for Florida. Again, it's David Palmer, number two for Alabama, back deep, standing at the goal line. This is going to come up short and will come down at the 10 yard line to Chris Anderson. Across the 25, and he gets collared, and I mean literally at the 27 yard line. Good return is Leroy Jones, number 90, was downfield to hit him with the hit high tackle. as they break the huddle to open the second half again it will be number seven Jay Barker a freshman from Trustville Alabama who will open a quarterback and now flags down all over the place John Stevenson and the right tackle position three times tonight now has cost penalty yardage to Alabama. You remember Roosevelt Patterson who had come into the ball game back in the first half, number 77. But the kids are anxious, and Mike, when you're playing against this kind of hard-hitting defense, every quick step is an advantage. Barker takes the hit. McCoy comes in to finish him off. Puck made the initial tackle on him. I think, see, the first play Alabama opens up with is the option. They're going to try to get Jay Barker and Saran Stacy on the corner. Tim Polk, number 99, made the tackle. Uh, again, it looked like they had problems with the fake to the fullback. Looks like the fullback's trying to grab a hold of the ball and not keeping his pocket wide open so Jay Barker can pull the ball. the 30 and he's out to the 34 yard line now this brings up a third down situation for Alabama they'll need about four yards Alabama caught Florida playing pass linebackers get a little depth to get the ball in the draw fake to Saran Stacy look at the block on the linebackers I'll tell you Saran Stacy's getting better as the game goes along in the second quarter I saw him picking it up a little bit also and uh, 
he didn't play last year, so all the experience helps him. 11 carries, 60 yards for him so far. Parker's pass is intercepted. It's Will White, and he had three last year in this same ball game. Gabe Barker was trying to go to Prince Wembley. Will White read it all the way. Was able to pick off the interception. Trying to get the ball to Derek Warren. Had Prince Wembley in the route. Good pressure by Call Pepper. A mistake by the Alabama offense. So the Gators with the first big break of the second half and now four Alabama turnovers. They go with the draw play. Dexter McNair inside the 25, and he will have a Florida first down at the 23. George Teague and Stacey Harrison, the two safeties for Alabama, coming up to make the stop. Ron, you'd like to have your quarterbacks like Jay Barker and Danny Woodson have a little more experience, and you really would dislike breaking them in in this kind of atmosphere. But this will be good experience for them. They'll grow from this. McNabb is the only setback this time for Florida. Matthews gets it away for the end zone. It is caught by Trey on the touchdown. Touchdown for the offensive line of Florida. They picked up the blitz. Also, it was poor ball recognition on the part of T. He never really turned around until the ball got there. The Gators go for two. Matthews all day throws it complete. Alonzo Sullivan for the two point conversion. Voicing their approval in Gainesville. So the Mike Gottfried, along with Adrian Karsten, Florida Field. And still another turnover by Alabama. This time it has cost them a touchdown. Palmer from the goal line. Crosses the 20. Still on his feet, and he will be stopped at the 34. Will White with the interception. I had a chance to talk with him yesterday because last year he had three against this same Crimson Tide team. Well, basically it was just one of those days that everything went right for me. Um, you know, sometimes you just have those days that everything go right, and that definitely was one of those days. Um, bringing them down here, hopefully I can have a game such, such, such as, you know, last year, or hopefully get close to it. Tonight, he has made another interception, four now in two games, as the pass completed to Prince Wimbledon. White out to help on the tackle, along with number three, Larry Kennedy. And that's going to be a gain of very close to ten. Both defenses have forced the action on the offense, and Alabama's defense after the interception caught, caught and just gave up that touchdown pass and man coverage. Ron Zooks is going to keep pressuring the young quarterbacks tonight. Blitzes from the inside, blitzes from the outside. Rimley now three catches for 34 yards. Saran Station. You can see a good lead block, and he is out to the 49, and let's go to Tim Brando. Yeah, you're wondering who's going to take over for Robo quarterback against Penn State. Well, here he is, Reggie Perry to Yanni Jackson. Second drive of the game for the Trojans. They lead against Penn State. The fifth-ranked Nittany Lions down 7-0 in the first. Back to Ron, Mike, and Adrian. 
Well, one thing that'll get you in a lot of trouble, and that is comparing scores in college football. But it is the type of year that Central Michigan today, two weeks ago, was Memphis State who knocked off that same Southern Cal team. Saran Stacy with a good, tough, hard run to the 46. T. Bartley, who is, we're happy to record, okay and back on the field after almost knocking himself out in the second quarter. He was there to make the tackle. Stacy now 12 carries, 68 yards. Rick Brown comes into the ball game. He is from Fort Worth, Texas. Where is number 82 for the Crimson Tide? Wide receiver. Pitch to Stacy. Hit in the backfield and on a second effort, Mike, I think he's going to have the first down. He was dead in the water. His pump was coming through and also Harvey Thomas, and he got away from both of them. Here's what Alabama's doing. You see the unbalanced line to the right with only two linemen. Florida just on this play, but again, a nice run by Strand Stacy to get close and pick up the first down. About to go into 11 minutes left to play in this third period as Florida struck early, taking advantage of the Will White interception. Derek Lassen will be caught at the line of scrimmage. Tony McCoy, a senior from Orlando, comes up big in the play. You know, it was very easy and very quick to understand that in talking with the Florida players the last couple of days, that Tony McCoy is very, very popular. And they think that his abilities are equal to some of the people who have just graduated this past year. And Florida lost some excellent defensive personnel. Huey Richardson, for starters. Here it comes to Palmer. And he will be hit and dropped for the loss back at the 50-yard line. Dell Spear stayed at home and then has a message. And you can see Palmer with an elbow as he walked away. Well, you run the unbalance, you run the toss, you run the toss, you run it four or five times, and all of a sudden you set the reverse up. David Palmer with good speed, but Dell Spear, the corner. On the side, the reverse came, stayed at home, and played it very well. Did not take the fake and did not try to over-pursue. Stayed exactly where he was supposed to and made the play. The name Spear has been prevalent here in Florida football circles for quite a while. Dell is a junior. His brother James played 86 through 1990. Barker, backside pressure. Fee Bartlett got there first. Two Florida sets. from the backside. Pressure again. Four players from the backside are coming. It's very difficult. See all four coming. It's almost impossible to pick them up. Tight end. Derek Warren tried to come off late, but the quickness of Fee Bartley was there, and he made the play on Barker. Williamson, his longest punt, 48 yards in Florida, very close to blocking that one. Is Duncan on the run. Breaks one tackle, but will not break the next. Great coverage with a crimson tie at the 30. 31 yards in the kick. Eight on the return. Well, the Gators are at 14 to nothing. Now let me give you a secret. Some play right before it. Trey Everett comes back to the huddle and said, Jason, listen to me. I can beat my man deep. SEC player of the year says, all right, it's yours. He heaved a long one. Okay, Adrian. And Jason. Sorry, we're having some problems with your mic. Part of your conversation as secret as that play. This is Rick. Breaks it for five and now close to ten. And the one thing that Mike talked about off the top of the telecast, there is a mirage of sorts, but don't misunderstand. Steve Spurrier had rather run the football, and if he gets that going, then Alabama is going to have some tough puzzles to solve in the second half. Well, he pressures on defense. Now the Alabama defense, this is a big series for them. They have to come up with something. They've got to cause a turnover. They go on the ground again. Oh, what a hit in the backfield. 
Knocked down for absolutely nothing. Eric Curry there to make the defensive play. Here's Tim Brando. Ron, Arizona's got the big play. George Malaulu, their quarterback, has a touchdown pass of 65 and now 85 yards. This one to David Lockhart. And Arizona, after the fake field goal to take the lead by four, now up 11. 28-17 over the Cardinals. Tim, somehow that makes more sense because Stanford was supposedly starting the ball game tonight with two of their regulars in the secondary missing, and that play looked like it. Alabama shows blitz. They go the other way to Florida. Has the first down, and Rick is in the open field inside the 45 to the 44. Curry again defensively. Back to the two tight end, tight end offense. This time, instead of running the counter with Eric Rett, number 33, they ran the toss sweep. Watch the toss sweep. Here's the pitch. Now, they, they don't come back to backside. Look at the lead block on a defensive back. And then just a great job of running by Eric Rett. The running backs do a great job here in Florida's offense. They block, they run the ball well, and they're very good pass receivers. Eric Rett led the SEC in total rushing last year with 845 yards. He has 76 this evening go down and the 25 second clock shows double zero and as you see Rip trotting down the field <laughs> the quick hitter right there he thought he was going to have a big delay of game play it up the ball on time five yards off now Well, 85,069, Alabama and Florida. Tonight's game, it is a new state record. 83-67 was the previous record. That was against San Jose. The most ever to watch a football game in the state of Florida, college or pro. Incomplete. Good coverage. The ball a tad high. Alonzo Sullivan is the man he wanted, but it was McMillan. All-American Junior College from uh, Glendale Junior College was there defensively. Sometimes you wonder how you get these delay of game penalties, but when offensively with Steve Spurrier, you're using so many formations. Sometimes they're just a little slow getting on the field, getting the play to the quarterback, then to the line of scrimmage when you're shifting so much personnel around, and that's what happened when they got the delay of game. Oh. Six and a half minutes, Mike, left in this third quarter. It has gone very quickly, and the Gators have struck by way of a turnover. White with the interception, then they got the touchdown pass to Everett. Marker goes down. Pass is thrown to the tight end, Charles Dean, and he is tackled at the line of scrimmage. Now let's see. The marker has been thrown deep in that right corner spot. And he's passed deep. Called it right in front of Gene Stallings, too, so he's going to get an earful <laughs> when he goes back to pick his flag up. Jimmy Harper, I've mentioned early out of the telecast, one of the veterans in uh, college football and particularly here in the SEC and defensive holding. Boy, are you right. It was called right in front of Gene. I asked Jimmy Harper the tough things that they're confronted with. Yeah, as you watch it I'll continue this story because it should be self-explanatory but I asked him what has become even tougher in college football and he said the fact that we continue to get new calls that are purely our decision at our discretion he said we've already got enough of those and the fans you know just he said they're so big and so quick now it's really tough I think he blew that call Rip goes for 12 well, I, I disagree with you I, I mean unless they were doing the Texas two-step that's holding let's go to Tim Brandon Florida State the neighbors of the Gators Marquette Smith with an 11-yard touchdown run against Western Michigan fellas best call in college football today by Lee Corso he said they beat Western Michigan by 50 after what Central Michigan did to Michigan State. They get two weeks to prepare now for the Wolverines. Florida State. What? Convincingly tonight. Drop play. Rep. And another 10-yard game. 
as the Florida running game continues to work on this series. George T comes up to make the stop. When they hit that touchdown pass just a little bit ago, that opened up the running game. Here's a draw. Eric Ritt, number 33. Watch it just open up. Good block on John Sullins by the offensive guard. George Teague eventually makes the play after a long game. Good look at that Florida offensive line. Mark White, Hisham Ismail, Cal Dixon, Jimmy Watson, and Tony Rowell as the chain is stretched and it's a Florida first down. Jim Watson is the only new face up there. The rest were starters last year. The other question mark was Raul at right tackle who underwent knee surgery after being hurt against Florida State, a game that we had last year. And you might remember the injury that he underwent, but that he suffered, I should say. Underwent major rehab and he is back as a starter at right tackle. Sullivan was the closest man to it. Mike, and in watching Matthews on that play right there, undoubtedly Steve Spurrier has said, run it down as far as you can every time. Let's start taking some time off the clock because he watched it until it was down to about two seconds. Well, I think he was checking off. I think he was changing the play, he brought his back over to the other side to try to help. So when Alabama has their problem with the four-man rush backside, it's because a center or a back's not coming back that way to help. Florida just moved the man over to help on the blitz. Draw play, Rip. At this time, he will go for only a couple as number 90, John Sullen, steps up into the hole. And the all-conference performer from last year knocks him down hard. He's a senior from Oxford, Mississippi. Get a stinger on that elbow. Here's John Sullins, a linebacker. He sees the draw coming. He has to attack the blocker. Now come off and make the play. Also, that's Michael Rogers, 52, who was at the bottom of the stack. He's a freshman from the Burn, Alabama. If you look at John. When you get the running game going like this, it's very difficult to bring those extra DBs in now because you really now Florida's got the edge a little bit with their play calling. Everett and Harrison Houston go wide to the left. And a timeout is called by Florida. So the 25-second clock was down to two. We'll go away for a moment. We'll be right back. Florida by a pair. Florida leads. Be sure to be with us at 4 o'clock tomorrow for the final round of the Hardee's Golf Classic. That's played in Coal Valley, Illinois. And the leaders after three rounds, David Edwards by one. He is 11 under par. Paul Azinger is at 10. And then Greg Norman, Steve Jones, and Steve Lowry. Two off the pace at nine under par. That's at four Eastern time tomorrow. The Hardy's Golf Classic. Matthews drills it. Touchdown, Florida. Willie Jackson. it through and let's take another look at it from the end zone. Shane Matthews used four receivers. Not much of a route. He had a lot of time. He finds Willie Jackson on the post route. Watch him come into your screen. He's breaking off post right here. Wide open. Defensive back. Too far behind him. Antonio Langham is too far behind him. Jade and Gene 
Shane Stallings talking across the way. Now all of a sudden it is 21 to nothing with just over four minutes to play in the third period. Hey, don't forget uh, game day. Get your college football Saturday kicked off. With a comprehensive look at the day's action, Chris Fowler and Lee Corso. That's at 11.30 Eastern time. And the next week here are the games. Kentucky and Indiana. Steve Fiziak and Gary Danielson will be there as the Hoosiers. Led by Vaughn Dunbar, host Bill Curry's Kentucky Wildcats at 12.30 Eastern time. And then Mike and I will be in Austin, Texas next Saturday night, 7.30 Eastern, as the Auburn Tigers take on the Texas Longhorns. All next week right here on ESPN. And of course, a great one on Thursday night. You saw the promo just a moment ago. It is Virginia and Georgia Tech. to Tucson we go Stanford Jason Columbus he can put it in the air but why not give it to JJ Lastly JJ goes 14 yards they go for two to the Cardinal but they fail it's 28 23 five point game midway through the fourth quarter well 51 points scored in that one for those who thought this one would be a high scoring affair no way but Florida has scored two touchdowns in the third against a very tough Alabama defense will be the end of the way. He will pick up a couple as Will White, number two, makes the stop. But when you see Palmer with the football, you can see why they want to get it to him at every occasion, because he's capable of taking a two-yard pass, 80 yards. What's happened in the second half is Alabama, of course, the critical turnover they had. But Florida is just playing so good a defense on now. Alabama's not threatening them at all down the football field. Duran Stacy has five and nine yards now. Carlton Miles will make the stop, but it'll be plenty enough for the Alabama first down. Coming up at the end of the ball game, the Visa players of the game, Mike and I will be choosing one from each team. Stacy now 15 carries, 80 yards for him. What I meant by that statement, Ron, is that Alabama's had success running inside, but they haven't had anything where they've been able to throw the ball deep. You, you can't, I can't remember a pass where they've been able to put it down the football field to threaten Florida to keep them off the receivers. Stacy, he can throw, and he does. Back to his quarterback, Barker. And the tackle will be made at the 44-yard line. That is an excellent read and defense by Florida. Del Spear again staying at home. Well, you tried to reverse him. He was there. He stayed home. Now he tried to throw a pass, which was a good call by Mal Moore and Gene Stallings. Here it is, the toss sweep to Saran Stacy. The Saran Stacy threw a touchdown pass last week. Now this week, he throws back to Jay Barker, the quarterback. But again, there's Del Spear. He did not leave where he was supposed to be. Not only that, when he got there, he made a just a perfect tackle as he locked him up. Second down, the line to make it to 49. to knock him down and no game. Coaches like to counter what they do from week to week. Last week, as I said, they pitched the ball to Saran Stacy. He ran to the right and threw a pass down in the corner. This week, they tried to throw back to the quarterback. All as you know, the other team has your tapes and they have your film and they're watching and practice against your plays. Add another play for number 27, Saran Stacy. Just well defended by Florida. Fundamental football. with the ball and he will be stopped maybe a gain of one in the play Paul also Brad Culpepper and listen to this ovation for the Florida defense
watch it bounce, and it will be touched down at the 20-yard line. Thirty-six yards on that punt. And what about air ball offense, Mike? It puts a lot of pressure on you by throwing the football, but again, I believe the run is the thing you have to stop when you stop Florida. Alabama tonight has played very good defense. They just haven't been able to get enough offense out to stay with Florida. Florida's a complete football team, strong on offense, strong on defense, and strong in special team. Alabama has a young offense that will come along. Well, you can see those numbers that Spurrier's clubs have racked up at both Duke and now coming down here to Alabama. Red hit in the backfield and again. Good defense. Jeremy Nunley, number 73. I guess the biggest point to make about that graphic that we saw just a moment ago, Mike, is the fact that not as many yards passing here in Florida, but if you look at the break offensively passing and running, it's like 50-50. Oh, it's even dead even. And you get in some games, he likes balance. Every coach, if you ask them what they want to do, they want balance in their offense. But the team that runs wins. The team that has success running the football, you have to be able to run it. This is McNair. 5, 10, 15. say officially 16 yards of the man who is chiseled uh, he is built like a fullback should be built Dexter McNabb at 60 238 pounds and very little bodily body fat and that could be the last play of this third quarter as the clock ticks down now to 15 seconds he has three carries for a total of 30 the difference in this quarter and the other quarters is Florida's been able to run the football they've kept substitutions off the field for Alabama and they're just effectively running the football go up down on the field to play and if you're Florida you've got to be breathing a little easier but there's 15 more minutes to play we'll be right back Florida field and this uh, a record setting night largest crowd to ever see a football game either college or pro in the state of Florida over 85,000 and the home folks have enjoyed it so far as Florida leads 21 nothing after three Red again. Not much doing on this one. And right now, let's take a look at the Army storyline. <laughs> Alabama, four turnovers, three fumbles. Matthews, 195 yards and two touchdowns, and the majority of that has come in the second half. Alabama never inside the 25 yard line. And the closest that they came to it, they turned the football over, Mike. Woodson went out with an injury. And the young freshman has played well to have to come in under these kind of conditions. Here's another look. Watch the counter play. Comes backside, picks his hole, makes a cut, breaks a tackle, keeps his head up, sprints to the goal line. Look at Mark McMillan close with his speed. Alabama with the player down on the near side of the field. And we are now being given the numbers that for Eric Red, 18 carries, 150 yards, and that is a career best for him. He led the SEC in rushing last year with 845. And in fact, with Willie McClendon hitting 613 yards, they were the best combo of running backs in the SEC as well. They run the ball effectively. I mean, they're, they're a good run game. And two, two things that we're talking about here, the good run game and the lack of depth for Alabama, which we'll talk about a little later, is playing a factor. Tim Brando, what do you have for us? 
Saturday the 14th, Ron and Mike, is the day of the fade. Go back to Howard. Now it's Saka to Terry Smith as the Nittany Lions have knotted the score against Southern California at 7. Back to Ron, Mike, and Adrian Carson. Thanks, Tim. Great story on Saka this morning on game day and the difficulties he and his head coach have had, but they obviously have solved it. Draw play this time to Kim, and he'll go for one, maybe two to the 14-yard line. John Copeland is there defensively. Ron was talking about earlier the fact that the depth problem Gene Stallings has when he when he took over this team there was a lack of depth and a lack of people to play and it's evident when you have to play 12 freshmen 12 freshmen played in the Temple game it's going to take a while to get this program they would have been my staff in the year last year for the job they did with the players that they had last year and the injuries that occurred I, I just think they did an outstanding job last year and they need to grow from this game. Florida's got him on the run. Gators with a 21 to nothing lead with a second down and eight at the 14. McNabb, boy, he gets tagged at the line of scrimmage. Michael Rogers. Don't misunderstand one thing. We, we give credit both ways. Alabama is down 21 to nothing, but defensively, this group of guys, they haven't turned the football over. They will really come up and pop you. They're wearing down a little bit. Here you see Michael Rogers, number 52, take on the draw. Dexter McNabb. The running game of Florida has been the difference in the second half. Lack of depth for Alabama and the turnovers by the offense. On third down, pressure up the middle. Matthews throws. When you have trouble stopping him, you got to go to man coverage. Willie Jackson just beats Mark McMillan. One on one coverage, then is able to break the tackle, get to the corner for the score. Krzyzewski to attempt the extra point. Credit Dexter McNabb with a key block for his quarterback. And the extra point is good. One more look at it. As Shane Matthews zips it to Jackson. And he breaks the tackle of Mark McMillan. And the reaction of the head coach, Steve Spurrier, likes what he sees. The Florida Gators on top of the Alabama Crimson Tide as Rand Ruland will kick it off. Chris Anderson. And at the 25 is knocked out of bounds. Tim Brando. Maryland and Syracuse. Really a critical intersectional game between the ACC and the Big East, Ron. Syracuse already leading 24-17. The game at Bird Stadium. Here's the punt coming down to Shelby Hill. He will angle quickly for the sidelines, gets a nice block, and is set free. And look at this. A little bit of high stepping into the end zone. The Orangemen now lead the Turks 31-17 in the fourth. Syracuse making some noise. As Maryland had led in that ball game, but now the set next for 31 points. Marcus pass is blocked at the line of scrimmage. Number 98, Harvey Thomas is the man who got a hand on it. And Brad Culpepper was also coming with some pressure. But it was Thomas who knocked it down. You know, Willie Jackson is working on uh, some pretty good numbers tonight because for his career, four catches, 56 yards, three touchdowns. He's got two of those tonight. He's had a good night. Uh, Jay Parker just got to get some good playing experience in this quarter. Check Danny Woodson's injury when they get back home. Parker will be sacked. Harvey Thomas got to him first. That is four Florida sacks of Alabama quarterback. The four, four man rush again. Eddie Robinson inside linebacker is going to come free. Martin Houston picked up the outside tackle 
That let Ed Robinson come free. Harvey Thomas joined in the sack. Six people came on that blitz. Thomas. I don't know if he got a Charlie horse or a muscle pull. Breaks off the tackle. Barker throws it complete over the middle. Martin Houston running hard and he will have the first down plus now about 10 yards. 35 yards in the pass play. And Jay Barker looked as though he was going to be sacked again back at the 10 yard line and he came free. Florida played pass coverage. Ran a 4-2 defense. Dropped people in coverage. Jay Barker was almost trapped, came out of it, smart enough, found Martin Houston. Martin Houston with good game. Tony McCoy almost had him behind the line of scrimmage. Kevin Turner, short yardage. Adrian Karsten has an update for us. All right, Ron, now before you start laughing at me, Gator Aid, as in Florida Gators, I'm telling you the truth. Meet Chris Patrick, the head trainer here. What was the inception of Gatorade all about? When did this happen? Well, it happened in the early to the mid 60s. In fact, uh, this is the 25th uh, year, 21st anniversary of Gatorade being available to the public. It uh, started out as, uh, as an idea to a uh, way to get people to get their fluids back in their system. And, and out of that evolved uh, trying to take sweat and uh, electrolytes and so forth and balance it up. Ron Franklin. Lawrence Hatch with the interception and another Alabama turnover to the Florida defense. And flags come in from all angles. Well, that pass forced just a little too much, and you'll see right here. Good coverage. Lawrence Hatch, number 18. Sitting on the streak route. Just makes an over-the-shoulder catch. And it looks like that's going to be face masking. They pressure you and then pressure you in the throws. off because of the infraction after the interception and actually face masking was not called it was a clip against Florida so the new line of scrimmage is the 10 yard line and we have 10 17 left to play in the ball game there you see the numbers Florida 28 to nothing and remember what we talked about off the top of the telecast actually in the tease during the scoreboard show Florida has never beaten Alabama in their home state they are 0 and 8 but they got a pretty good start on it tonight. Will White, number two in the left part of your screen, had an interception tonight, which was key to turn things around in the second half. Of course, he had three last year against Alabama. Stacy Harrison and the programming note two weeks from tonight this is what will be coming your way Auburn at Tennessee we will be in Knoxville next week it is Auburn in Texas then we head up to Knoxville Tennessee for the 90 plus thousand boy they won a big one today impressively over a good UCLA team hunt block started it all off for them they just really played well we saw them against Louisville a couple weeks ago they were playing well and they played great defense today. Andy Kelly had a big day and a big win for him against UCLA. McClendon again. He gets the corner turn for the first down. They'll spot him out of bounds at the 23. George Teague and Byron Sneed Proctor making the stop. Time, 
Steve Spurrier continues to signal the plays into the sideline. Always Don's advisor when they play the, the games in the daytime, but, but not at night. He never wears that thing. is there to make the stop. This is where depth becomes a problem in the fourth quarter. Willie McClendon, when you shuttle backs like Florida is able to do, you get a Willie McClendon who looks like he's really fresh right now. He has fresh legs. They're in a two tight end offense, and they're just going to run the football against Alabama. He's going to have a couple as he comes back to the open side of the field this time. Michael Rogers, number 52, the freshman from Laverne. And the numbers on Shane, it got off to a shaky start, Mike, in the first half, but now 207 yards. A couple of touchdown passes and a couple of interceptions. Three touchdown passes, actually. That's right. Trey Everett got one as well. Well, he was not in that frame of mind in the first half, was he? Things settled down for him, and they were able to start running the football with success, which opened up the pass. Red is shy of the 45-yard line. Gregory again there to make the stop. I'm very impressed with the offensive line of Florida. Well, I mentioned that Watson is the only new face up there. Three pretty good football teams in the state. Yeah, I'll tell you what, if you win the state championship of Florida, you might have a, just a pretty doggone good shot at winning the national championship, wouldn't you? Wow, I'll tell you what, you take Miami, Florida State, and Florida <laughs> and play some football in this great state. Hands it back to the quarterback, and he is going to go long. from the defensive back. Hey, you run, 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 run. Pitch the ball. Give it back to the quarterback. Look for Harrison Houston on a post. He's well covered by Stacy Harrison. Number one, Paul just goes through his hands. Harrison Houston just concentrates, makes the catch. Here you see the pass coming down right through the hands of the Alabama player to Harrison Houston. Brian Fox in at quarterback. Number 16, the junior from Orlando. Fumbles the snap and pitches it back to Rick. He will turn the corner and is inside the five to the three. Michael Rogers is there. Welcome back, Shane Matthews is okay. We were just checking. His head coach just wanted to see Brian Fox get some snaps in a ball game if they lead 28 to nothing. Fumble the second snap, and he'll make his own recovery. Well, when you have the luxury of having this kind of lead. No sense in taking a chance on getting your number one hurt and get your number two some experience. Well, that's what happened to Alabama last year. Gary Hollingsworth played most of the time for Gene Stallings because they were having a good year and they went to the Fiesta Bowl and, and Danny Woodson now and Jay Barker have to get their experience on the job during this season. So you like to get your quarterback some playing time like they are Fox right now. Third down. Florida needs a yard and a half. Rick. 
go on top 35 to nothing Florida was favored in this one but I'm not sure anybody would have believed this kind of score with five and a half minutes left to play in the ball game this is Palmer Palmer still on his feet and takes it out across the 30. Adrian Karsten, let's get an update from him. Ron, let me tell you just how right you are about the quality of football players here in the state of Florida. No less than 89 players on the varsity roster across the field at the University of Florida. 21 of their 26 scholarship signees are from Florida. So where would you expect to find the SEC Player of the Year from? Mississippi. There he is. His father played football at Ole Miss, in fact. Shane Matthews. Pascagoula, Mississippi, down on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. These are the all-time passing leaders for Florida, Kerwin Bell. And then John Reeves, who was in the booth right to the left of us, Wayne P., Steve Spurrier, 4,848, and Shane Matthews. He's got a pretty good start, Mike, with this entire season and next year coming up, 3476. Good stats tonight with 251. Five sacks tonight for Florida. Culpepper and Brandon this time. There's two good reasons why they're why you recruit in Florida. Number one is there's a lot of players, and then when you're coaching in the northern schools, you want to get out of that weather and come on down and recruit them. And there's just so many players in the South. When you look at Florida State, Florida, and Miami, that just helps high school football when they're playing so well also. The state of Florida is sending an amazing number of kids into Division I football now. Flag comes down. Barker will rush it out to the 40-yard line, and I didn't know better. I thought I heard Gene Stallings say, please get to the ground. We don't need a second quarterback injured tonight. He already lost Woodson, an injury just below his elbow and the right arm. Offensive line, 10 yards, by the foul. Here's John Reeves. Gene Stallings' thoughts are on next week. As he stands on the sideline, his staff now starts to contemplate the moves they have to make and what they have to work on for next week's game. Now, th this has a, been a learning experience and we've got to get better and that's exactly what he'll tell his team in the dressing room after the game. They played hard. They just made so many mistakes. They made too many mistakes to overcome. And this man's team, Steve Spurrier, he has an outstanding football team. Florida was not devoid of mistakes in the first half, but they really cleaned them up in the second half. Almost error free. Hear the groan of the crowd as Barker really takes a shot from Tim Paul. Number 99. And the punting unit comes on again. 4-0-3 left to play in this ball game. Tank Williamson has been a busy man tonight. He's done a very good job. So let's take a break. 337 left to play. It is Florida. 35, Alabama nothing. Uh, 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 
on, baby. Well, we're back with just over three and a half minutes to play in this ball game at Florida Field, 35 to nothing. The Gators, number six ranked over Alabama. Brian Fox with a handoff to Kelvin Randolph and Michael Rogers there to make the stop. Back to Tim Brando when he has another update for us. All right, fellas, thank you very much. Maryland coach Joe Krivak is a Syracuse alum. He lost to Syracuse tonight, 31 to 17, the final of that game. Auburn, Pat Dye in his 200th game as a head coach, beats Mississippi 23 to 13. And with only a second left in the half, now it is halftime. USC leading Penn State 14 to 7. We'd like to welcome those of you that have been watching those games to tell you that Chris Fowler and Lee Corso will have the scores of all the games coming up immediately after Florida and Alabama. Thanks, Tim. Interesting score. Mississippi had only given up a couple of field goals. And tonight, Auburn scores 23 and wins by 10 over there. Convincing win. Have Auburn next week against the Texas Longhorns out in Austin. As McNabb is knocked down for a loss, and again, Michael Rogers. We have called number 52 many times tonight. He's done a good job. Odin never came back into the ballgame after he injured an ankle, and they wrapped it. Rodgers got a chance to come in, only a freshman from Laverne, Alabama, 6'1", 220. And to go a little further on the point that Mike made, that this is one that Alabama, the only thing you can do, you just draw a lot of experience from it. It's young players who have not played get an opportunity to, to take snaps. And there you see the difference in this ball game. Florida, 172 second-half yards. McNabb. It'll bring up a fourth down, fourth down, and about seven yards to get the first. And the punting unit will come on for Florida. Atlanta, big win today in the National League West. formation and the Florida will let the clock go down and get the five yard penalty if it happens. There's the whistle. In checking back at the record books for you trivia buffs, the first time that Florida has ever shut out Alabama. And also, it's the first time that Bama has lost by 35 points or more since a 35 to nothing loss to Georgia back in 1948. Say, Alabama's had such a tradition rich football program. Edges kick in over in. of players of the game for the University of Alabama is Saran Stacy. Stacy tonight with uh, 17 carries for 80 yards and for the University of Florida it is Eric Rip. What a night for him. 170 yards. That is a career high for him. And as part of their continuing effort to further the, the development of amateur athletics, Visa is proud to donate $1,000 to the U.S. Olympic team on behalf of these athletes. with the mix-up now under a minute to play. Paul Pepper still in on defense. Made the play. Paul Pepper now coming out of the ball game. We mentioned off the top of the telecast he is a third generation athlete here at the University of Florida. His grandfather and his father both played here. Barker's pass delivered incomplete. 
probably the most important thing also about Culpepper, besides the fact that he is a co-captain and a leader, he is about to be, for the fourth time, on the honor roll in the SEC All-Academic. He also is the vice president of the student body. His father was president of the student body when he was in school here on campus at Florida. Well, Brad Culpepper and that whole defensive line has just put so much pressure on the Alabama quarterbacks tonight. They never really had a chance to set up. The residents and CFA scoreboard coming up next. You can see some of the highlights of what we will look at. Pass complete over the middle to the 30-yard line to Kevin Lee, sophomore from Mobile. And that could be the final play of the ball game as Shane Matthews looks on. He has to be pleased, not necessarily with the first half. I'm sure he would be the first to say that the first half was not something he'd like to write home about. But he really righted himself in the second half.